NASCAR at the Roval packed a punch at the end when one driver won and locked themselves in the playoffs, but was the race good overall? We'll get a nose on that. Thank you so much for watching this channel. Um, it's gonna be a short one today uh, as we break down the race. Let's get right into it by starting with Christopher Bell, the race winner. Yes, Christopher Bell goes to victory lane after winning today's race. <clears throat> I mean, in a splendid fashion, mind you. Congratulations to him. Now, obviously, a lot went down in this race. A lot of things did happen. But all in all, there was great excitement. There was great action at the end of the race. Now, in the middle of the race, it was a little sour and not great. And <clears throat> I hinted at that in my open. But the middle portion of today's race was far from, I would say, entertaining. It, there was strung out fields, boring things. But at the end of the race, the playoff battle heated up. It all kind of started when Daniel Suarez had his power steering issues. And we started to see that he was trending to not make it into the playoffs. Unfortunately, he did not. And then it started to go into the other p p parts of the puzzle as well when Christopher Bell looked to have an extremely fast car and went to victory lane and won. Obviously, knowing both of those drivers are amazing, great drivers. Christopher Bell, a guy that knew going into this race, he needed to win to make it in. If he didn't, he would have been packing and going home, and he did win. And he advanced to the next round of the playoffs. Obviously a really great great job for him and everybody around. I mean, I couldn't have I couldn't have asked for a better finish to the race. The finish of the race was splendid. A little too a little too wrecks. A little too many wrecks, I will say that. But besides the the wrecks, it was a splendid race that had great action, great excitement, and more. And and the fact that Christopher Bell a driver that, like I said, needed a win. He knew if he didn't win, he would be out. Gets the win, makes it into the next round of the playoffs with said win, adds to how amazing this race was. In fact, it was so good that I think many drivers will agree with me that the finish and the fact that he was able to do that is great. Now, many people say, all right, well, he wins, and he knocks out a great driver of Kyle Larson out of the playoffs. And Kyle Larson being a potential championship favorite, he knocked out a great driver out of the playoffs. And it is so tough, especially when it's on this big of a stage. It brings these dramatic, awesome moments to the forefront of NASCAR. When a driver wins that we know needed to win, it brings that fact in. But it also takes away from the, the, the driver aspect of points and how hard you work all season. Kyle Larson has had a great season, I would say better season than Bell, but couldn't win a race late in the season. And that's obviously always up for debate, especially at these races, is is that a fair thing to be so good all season and maybe not win or make it into the final four? So that's that. Let's take a look at the finishing results as we just talked about Christopher Bell with the win. Obviously a great win for him, a great win for his team. They needed it, and they got it, and that was good for them. Kevin Harvick finishing in second. A great finish for Harvick, and another veteran, Kyle Busch. Great finish for both of those guys. Kyle, we haven't talked about in forever. He's finally in third place. AJ Allmendinger, obviously a road course ringer, finishes in fourth. Uh, Justin Haley, again we keep talking about Justin Haley in fifth place. Chris Buescher in 6th, Bubba Wallace in 7th, Tyler Reddick in 8th, 
Chase Briscoe in ninth. What a move by Chase Briscoe at the end of that race to kind of plow his way through two drivers. A little help from his teammate to get himself the next round of playoffs. Great move there. Austin Dillon in 10th. Eric Jones in 11th. Corey LaJoy in 12th. Danny Hamlin in 13th. Brad Keselowski in 14th. And Eric Amarola in 15th. Those are your top 15 finishers. Uh, let's switch gears and talk about the playoff drivers eliminated. And we will start with... Uh, who are we going to start with? Well, the four drivers eliminated were Danny Suarez, uh, Austin Sindrick, Kyle Larson, and Alex Bowman. Let's talk about Alex Bowman first. What a terrible round for Alex Bowman. It's really simple at that. When you're just as bad as they were this round, you're going to get knocked out of the playoffs. Tough Texas, tough Talladega, and even in today's race, they were out of contention um, at the end of the race after getting caught up in incidents. When you have a round like that, it's real simple to be eliminated. And they and they were. Uh, then it's Austin Sindrick, another guy. I don't think we any of us really expected Austin Sindrick to go to the next round, but he did, and that is not great to see. But it is something that does happen, and no one likes to see veterans get eliminated or drivers of good caliber get knocked out, um, like Kyle Larson did. Um, but for the two, Austin Sindrick. This was one of his best chances. Failed. All right, now to uh, Kyle Larson, who again we just briefly talked about. Had the skill, had the drive. He was an incredible driver. Many of your playoff picks were Kyle Larson. He's out of the playoffs. I mean, a veteran like him will not defend his championship. He will not make it to the Final Four, which a lot of people had him as a guarantee to make it to the Championship Four. He won't even make an appearance there. And I think that it is insane that that's what happened. And the fact that that's all that that he has to say is, yeah, I was, I was eliminated. You could tell after the race how he was very distraught. He was not happy. But what can we say? You're eliminated, and it's so tough. But that's sports, and that's what makes it awesome. And Dennis Wards fell to his car failing him. Simple as that. Power steering issue just doesn't make himself through. And then there were eight. Let's take a look at the final eight drivers in the NASCAR playoffs. Those include Chase Elliott, who will go into these playoffs in the final round with almost 50 points. 50 points. Big lead, but that lead can go away in a race. It can go away in a race, and you could find yourself battling for a playoff position uh, in a spot in the Final Four. Joe Logano finds himself in second with 26 points to the good. Not comfortable at all. You could be below the cut line in the race in that situation. Ross Chastain finds himself 21 points to the good. A great driver. Uh, but retaliation hasn't gotten up to him yet. Martinsville's in this round. That could be the retaliation track. Or is he not going to get retaliated on? Christopher Bell finds himself on the cut line by two points to the good. He finds himself two points to the good. He has 18 of those. Byron is 15th. Blaney has got 15 points. Hamlin's got 13 points. And Briscoe's got 9 points. Briscoe's got a lot of points to make up. Uh, 7 points to be exact. Hamlin... It's got a couple points to make up, and the other two guys have a couple points to make up. It's a really tight battle for the championship four, and we'll see it on full display next week at Las Vegas, a mile and a half, where the Toyotas have all been good. So watch them there. All right, let's talk about the Rover Racing. I think I kind of said it on the top. The middle of this race was kind of boring. It was honestly, at times, hard to watch. So I'm not going to give it... An incredible score, but the ending did make up for the downfalls of today's race. That is for sure. It was a very good, entertaining end to the race. So for that, I will hit the gas and give it a B-minus today at the Roval. 
Tell me what you guys think about this race down below in the comments section. Until next one, I'm Cameron Simpson. Peace out.